We're gonna do a duo background. I'm doing a duo. So maybe I'm not so washed out. Who knows how that's gonna go. Hi everyone, it's Lindy. Everyone has been asking to see how my inventory system works, how it works, what it looks like, what I do, and you know, I can understand why. When I was first trying to figure out my own system, I did watch a lot of videos, I read a lot of blogs to try to figure out what a fail-proof system was because when it comes down to it you do need a system that works the best for you because when you're selling on ebay or you're selling on amazon or any platform really when something sells you need to be able to locate that item in an efficient way you don't want to lose merchandise you don't want to take a whole lot of time to finding it to do your shipping you need something that's quick and efficient and works for you so after you know i don't know a year and a half of trying to find a system that worked for me i feel like i finally found one and so i'm going to share my system with you guys right now and fair warning some things don't look so tidy they don't look perfect but you know what i kept thinking to myself if i wait for my inventory system to look and feel perfect the video is probably never going to happen let's be real progress not perfection right so i'm just going to show you my inventory system currently how it works what it looks like and why i do what i do so we're going to leave my office we're going to go out into my inventory space this is my huge wall of denim I do have another one. I'll take you into the other room in just a moment, but this is my main one. This is where the majority of my jeans are stored and how I handle the inventory system. I do have other videos about this, but I'll just go over it again because it is a common question that I get. So on the shelves, there's a series of numbers, right? every single stack coordinates with these numbers so when a pair of jeans sells this number is in the listing so it, let's say we have a pair of jeans that's number 155 when that particular pair of jeans sells i know to come to the stack that contains number 155 and so from this point all i would do and I have the waistbands visible. If I know that I'm looking for, you know, let's say Gloria Vanderbilt, and it's number 155, I would come directly to the stack that has 155 in the middle of it, and I would just thumb through, and then I'm like, oh, okay, here's the Gloria Vanderbilt. If I really wanted to double check, there are coded numbers in the pockets, and... And I know I've shown you guys the numbering system before with the little tags in the pockets. And a lot of people are very, very opinionated about how I do my system, about how I just take, you know, a piece of paper. Let me pull it out. I'll just pull it out right now. So in the pockets, there is a number. Is it going to focus? Maybe. Anyway, you could see that it's 150. So there is... A number and it's simply just in the pocket of the jeans it's in the pocket of the jeans I've had a lot of people be very very opinionated about that and not in a bad way just you know people are opinionated they're trying to give me a better way of doing it you know people have told me that I should um, somehow pin it to the outside of the jeans maybe use a, a clothing tag you know with like the little plastic uh the little guns that stick the little plastic tags um i've had people suggest using like maybe painter's tape with the number written on the outside so that i can find them easier so that i don't have to worry about the the number falling out of the pocket but here's the deal you guys here's the deal the reason why i have selected just putting the number in the pocket it's because it works. I have never, ever, ever had a number fall out of a pocket when it has been stored away. Now, when an item sells and I find the pair that I need, I will grab it from the stack and I will pull it out. My biggest concern with things like tape 
or plastic tags, um, using the little gun tags like they have at the grocery store. The problem that I have with doing something like that is when I pull a pair of jeans out, what if a tag rips off? What if a tag rips off a pair of jeans when I'm pulling them out? What if the tag rips off of another pair? And then I just don't know. That's a problem that I have. The second problem that I have is that it adds time. It adds time. The numbers are in the pocket. It's really easy for myself or it's really easy for my lister to just stick the, the tag in the pocket. There's no time with like shooting the gun or sticking a piece of tape on and labeling the tape. It's a big time saver. It's super simple just to stick it in the pocket. And in women's jeans, uh, we all know that the pockets can be pretty small. So if the pockets are really small in the front, we just stick it in the back pocket. And we have a system, Melissa and I, my lister, we have a system. We always do the left pocket. And if that pocket is too small and we worry about the tag falling out, we stick it in the back pocket and to this day I have never had a tag come up missing when jeans are stored in inventory. Never. So my whole line of thinking is don't fix what's not broken. I can find my jeans, the tags are in there, and it's fast and efficient. So that's what I do. All right so back to the jeans. Okay so I have let's see we start at number 101 and this wall goes all the way to number, the lighting in here is awful, 973. That's the highest. So there's a pretty good amount of jeans that are along this wall. Um, you can see that some stacks are higher than others. Um, it's simply just because a lot of jeans have sold in this number category versus this number category. Not very many jeans have sold. So you know, they just, some stacks are bigger than others. It just depends on what jeans sell and where they are and how many are pulled from inventory. So this is how I store my jeans. Also, another question that I seem to get pretty frequently about how I store my jeans is why I don't save time by bagging them and inventorying them in bins. Uh, you know, once they get listed, stick them in a bag, that way they're all ready to go. And once they're sold, I can just pull them from inventory. They're already packaged and I can just stick them in a mailer and send them on their way. There is a very good reason why I do not do that. Number one reason is speed and efficiency. My biggest goal is to get things listed fast. After I list things, the last thing I want to do is package it up, okay, and then also putting things away. This is really super efficient for me, putting it away. All I do is fold them over and I stick them in. It's, it's really fast and simple. The other big reason why I don't go ahead and package them is because you do get questions. Jeans is something that you get questions. You could have every measurement in the world. You could have every picture in the world. And chances are, if there's a certain buyer that wants a particular piece of information, they're going to ask you. And if you get a question on a pair of jeans, you're going to have to open up the package and measure or check a tag or uh, double check a, a shade question. I mean, I've gotten a lot of questions about jeans. That is one of the real, I want to say, downsides to selling jeans is there's a lot of questions. People will want to know the knee, the, the portion of the jeans that have the knee, how, how it measures across, the ankle opening, they want the measurement, they want to know the exact jean content. I've even had people, and now I'm not saying this as a complaint, I'm not saying I hate it when people ask me these questions because people are entitled to know. I'm just saying that there is a lot of questions about jeans. There's a lot of questions that people can ask. You know, I've even had people ask me what the specific RN number is on a pair of jeans because, you know, people have those brands and those styles that they fall in love with and they want to make sure that it's the identical RN number or the identical style number and you don't always have that information unless you take pictures and do a measurement of every little bit of the jeans so you would have to open up the jeans to do these measurements or to look at these specifications that people ask you so I just find 
that having them in open storage like this, they're up off the floor, they're not being harmed, they're in a safe environment. If someone has a question on a pair of jeans, it's really no trouble for me to just come in, grab the pair from inventory, do the measurement, look at the tag, do whatever I have to do. And then when they sell, that's when I package them. And until then, they're stored this way. And I don't fix what's not broken. So then above my main jean storage, you'll find three bins. Now, I know a lot of people will do a lot more bins, but I really only need three of this specific kind. So I have bin A, bin B, and bin C. And what's kept in these bins is t-shirts. That's about it. <laughs> They're just shirts, tops, tank tops, things like that. And in the listing, I say whether or not they're in bin A, bin B, bin C. So when they sell, I know exactly what bin to find them in. Then on the other shelf, something similar. They're not numbered bins. They're actually styled bins. So that is a bin that just has scrub tops in them. That's a bin of skirts. And that's a bin of shorts. So if there is a pair of shorts that is unique... I do not inventory number it. I just simply throw it in this. Now, if they're denim shorts, I will number them just like I would jeans. If they're denim shorts, they get numbered just like jeans. But if they're like a funky pair of shorts or there's something unique about them that makes them different, I will just stick them straight into the shorts bin. You know, same with skirts. If they're denim skirts, I'll inventory them just like jeans, but if there's something unique about them, I'll just stick them in the skirts bin because they'll be easy enough to find once they sell. I just have to dig through the bin and find that unique skirt. Scrub tops, I just stick all of the scrub tops in the bin because they're all individual and unique. So when they sell, it's not difficult to find them. I don't find a need to inventory them by a numbering system like I do everything else. Because as you can see, the primary thing that I sell is jeans. That's the primary thing that I sell. So because it's in such abundance in my store, I need to number them. I need to have a numbering system so that when they sell, I can locate them. But the things like, you know, shirts or skirts or shorts or scrubs, those things don't need to be numbered because I don't have nearly as many. Make sense? Okay, so this is another corner of my inventory space slash basement slash work zone, whatever you want to call it. What this is, is it's just two racks. I picked them up at Walmart. They are double barred. I'll just walk up and show you. And the lighting down here is awful, you guys. I'm sorry. So it is double barred. Both of them are double barred. So I have items that are hanging. I tend to hang things like dresses or fancier shirts that are maybe worth a little bit more money, um, jackets, things like that, basically. Um, I will hang those up and I don't have an inventory number for any of these just because I feel like they are hanging up so I can see them at a glance. It makes them pretty easy to find once they sell. And then down here, these are bins of items that actually need to be hung up, but I am completely out of hangers, so I actually need to go get some more hangers. But that is another part of my inventory system. Nothing fancy. Super simple. So this is another area of my storage space and basement space. I'm sorry that the lighting is so awful in here, you guys, but I'm not gonna drag my light all the way in here just to film this clip. So these are more shelves that have jeans on them. Now, these are not completely full. The shelves have the space for the jeans, but they are not completely full. And it's the exact same deal as in the other room. But in this room, we start with number, is it going to focus? We start with number 974, and it goes all the way. Now, of course, these shelves are not filled yet, but it goes all the way to 1,728. So that's the storage space that I have for jeans. 
let's focus up again. So there are a whole lot of places that are empty. That's just because um, these are the higher numbers. And since I've been growing my store, I don't have, you know, <laughs> all of the pairs listed just yet. So there are some empty spaces, but they will eventually get filled because I'm still growing my store. But this is another area of gene storage. And then just across from that is a little bit more storage. Now, not all of this is eBay or Amazon or any other selling platform. Not all of it is, but the bins are for the most part. You know, obviously this is seasonal. This has like Halloween costumes, Christmas sweaters and things like that. I don't usually have a lot of those listed just because I don't want to be stuck with seasonal items when it's no longer the time of year. I don't want to have an abundance of it. So I try to keep all of those listings down to a single bin. And then the bins next to them basically hold retail arbitrage. I think this one is, yeah, that's actually, oh, Christmas decorations. But like this bin here is full of, oh look, candy and stuff. So it does have some retail arbitrage. There's not a whole lot. I've been kind of moving away from retail arbitrage, but these bins here, I think this one and this one and this one, those all have retail arbitrage in there, whether it's candies or gum or things like that, um, or dryer sheets or any of the other random retail arbitrage things that you guys have seen. There's not a whole lot of inventory over here. So it's kind of mixed in with my household stuff. So when it does sell, then I know where to find it. But that's just, you know, another small area where I keep inventory. So now let's talk about unlisted inventory. So those I usually keep in the garage. And when I say unlisted inventory, oh look, there's my shadow. Ooh. So <laughs> this is just another corner of my basement. These bins are actually full of jeans, just ready to go over to Melissa's house. Each bin holds 25 pairs. And they just sit over here until I'm ready to give her more. I'm going to be taking her, let's see, she's going to do 150. So there's 25 in each bin, so I take her six bins. So six bins are actually leaving my basement and going to her house this coming weekend. So six of these bins are hopefully going to be gone in the next couple of days. So, but that is how I do jeans inventory, unlisted inventory, I mean. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. I hope maybe it gave you some ideas. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in down in the comments and I will try my hardest to answer them. My inventory system really is straightforward. Whatever place I need to find that item, I have either the bin letter or the bin number or whatever. I put it just right at the end of the title or in the body of the listing. That way when the item sells, I know exactly where the item is located. And that's how I store it all. You just saw it all. Every bit of how I store my stuff, you just saw it. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up and let me know. And to see more content, make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys with my next video. Bye!